Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And Top Gun Maverick has taken down Infinity War. It's the sixth highest grossing movie in domestic box office history. I think if you go out and check, it is number 13 worldwide. Uh, very interesting though. I knew this movie was gonna do well. I did not expect it to do nearly as well as it's no, done. No, no. And that's without China, without China. And this is what happens when you, you make a film that's just a good film. Yeah, uh, it is a throwback to the 1980s. Of course, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer is uh, a producer on the Top Gun series. And uh, it's interesting because this movie did so well that now you know, we did the video yesterday talking about Nicolas Cage, mm -hmm. you know, possibly coming back for National Treasure 3, and I have to wonder if Bruckheimer's getting more pull to get Johnny Depp back for Pirates now, because, yeah, they're going to look at this and be like, yeah, this movie made a lot of money. And also, the director uh, is the guy who directed Tron Legacy, so maybe we'll finally get Tron Yeah, 3. they've been waiting for that for a while. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about this amazing success and uh, what happens when you give audiences what they want. This, this is what happens. This is... No. But, oh, yeah, you know what they're gonna do now instead? They're mm -hmm. doing a, a Ferris Bueller Day Off spinoff with the guys that were the parking attendants. Oh, yeah, I our, saw that. That's, I'm like, what? that's what they're gonna go with instead. Stuff that's like what that. you're gonna go with. So anyway, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And Rance has over 274,000 subs, almost woo. 275, we're almost 275. Uh, so yeah, this is a sequel, a throwback to not just a, a 1980s franchise, but the 1980s style of filmmaking. And if you like the 1980s and that style <laughs> of uh, storytelling, check out Crimson Ren Volume 1 from Clownfish Studios on Indiegogo, launching very soon. In fact, I'm finishing up the campaign tonight, hopefully tonight or tomorrow morning. We're going to launch it. It is a throwback to, uh, I guess, a Spielbergian Spielbergian era of, there you of that, was, that was smooth storytelling, right? That was smooth. Very nice. uh, it is a prequel to the Shadowbinders webcomic, which was pretty popular back in the day. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys pick up a copy of it. It's a new IP. We like there you it. go. There we go. There you go. You know, hitting all the boxes here. Anyway, uh, Variety Top Gun Maverick takes down Avengers Infinity War. Uh, it was actually a top story on comic book resources today too. Uh -huh. Uh, the milestones keep rolling in. Top Gun Maverick has collected $679 million in North America, enough to overtake Marvel's Avengers Infinity War as the sixth highest grossing movie in domestic box office history. Again, this is domestic. It's number six. It's coming for, for Black Panther. It's coming for Avatar. Yeah, here's the thing, though. I think it's releasing on... Yeah, you know, digital. digital soon, like in a couple days. Like, was it 23rd, I want to yeah. say? So, you know, I don't know how much time they have left to overtake. Aren't they, or didn't they already release like a fan cut or something? So, I, I don't know. I mean, I knew this movie was going to do pretty okay, mm -hmm. but I never expected it to do this well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew Top Gun was a big deal in the 80s, but I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time that people care. Eh, you know, yeah. it'll do okay. But and it yeah, was a good they, movie. They do. They and it's do funny care. because they try to argue that it, oh, it's because it panders to a certain group. I mean, the vocal minority you keep yelling about that it can't be too much of a minority then, can it? Yes, it's military propaganda, several several media outlets. That not really. If you've seen like the it. movie, it's not really military propaganda. It's military propaganda. Official documents prove it. Official documents. Uh, you know what? Okay, oh, I mean, because it was a recruitment tool? Yeah. It was last time, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. This is like a throwback to the 1980s. Like I said, if you're an 80s kid, we had the Care Bears and the Get Along Gang and Fraggle Rock next to, you know, Rambo and RoboCop and G.I. Joe. I had to laugh. I thought it said Screech Post. Screech Post. It, it sheer post. I mean, sheer it pretty much is Screech, screech Post. post. Um, it's like, oh my God, it's just military propaganda. No. Well, you know what? I had hate to break it to you, but there's a bunch of TV shows, and especially animated ones lately, that I could argue are propaganda. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, you know, if if it works, uh, it made a lot of money. And this is actually, I think, going to tip the scales a little bit, push that pendulum a little further back to center, um, because this does feel like something right out of the Reagan era. And, and uh, you know, we're starting to see uh, G.I. Joe's kind of making a comeback. The mm -hmm. toys are making a comeback. The Snake Eyes movie was dog shit. But the toys are making a comeback. And I'm like, you know, could we get could we get a 1980s G.I. Joe movie? That would be pretty cool. Yeah, don't hold your breath. But, I'm you know. not holding my breath. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, we went to PowerCon and they had uh, Aaron Archer did a panel. And he worked on 
um, you know, Joe, well, mm-hmm. he had worked on Joe a whole lot, but definitely Transformers and some stuff with Hasbro. And he said, yeah, there was a decline in G.I. Joe because of uh, real life war. And he said, we just kind of put a moratorium on war toys other than, you know, the collector's market. But he's like, I don't know. He said that Joe toys are selling really good now. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the six inch figures are selling really, really well. So maybe, I don't know. If you're going to do, there you go, Hasbro. If you're going to try G.I. Joe again, Set it in the 1980s. Well, didn't they didn't they get their backing for their you know like they couldn't get the backing for the Reva lightsaber, but they got the backing for the oh the his tanks the his yeah. tank right freaking away. his tanks they sold um what eighteen thousand of them something yeah like that so you know clearly there's demand there's absolutely demand so there you go guys if Top Gun if Top Gun can uh, make a comeback uh, GI Joe can make a comeback you just got to lean into that Reagan era mindset you know which also it wasn't just about the guns. And the the army, it was also about the money. Money, 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 Mm -hmm. money. So lean into it, man. Make some money. Um, Yeah, so he said it's an especially impressive benchmark because 2018's Every Hero But the Kitchen Sink Adventure Infinity War had uh, a little help in building up the anticipation. Um, Yeah, it was like all the Marvel movies were commercials for the next Marvel Mm -hmm. movie. And this one was just like, oh, yeah, hey, we're doing another Top Gun. After And after we had um, Spider-Man, it's kind of like... They've not been doing that great. Let's be honest here. No, so they can't use, they've been trying to use the, well, people are still, older people don't like to go to the, they did this with James Bond. Older people aren't going to the movies because um, the pandemic, yeah, hey, yeah, it's still a thing. It's it's just the thing this weekend and they're not going to go. And it's like, no, they didn't go see James Bond because James Bond died and the movie wasn't that good. Right. Um, This one, people are going back again and again and again, which is, again, and again and again, uh, what we used to do back in the 80s. You'd go see a movie once, and then you'd go back three or four times. That's what they're saying. Repeat customers. <laughs> they're they're going to argue. It's the same, like, they're oh, bots. Right, minority. They're yeah, bots they're buying the, the tickets. Movie the alt rights using, how the alt right used Russian bots to promote their military propaganda. Well, it's funny because it didn't play in China or Russia. Of course it didn't. And then the markets it did play in outside the United States, it didn't it didn't even break a hundred million in those markets because of course it's not. It's a US like, you know, America fuck yeah movie. Yeah, we need another team America. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do. But no, I mean this is great. This is how it used to be. It used to be like we would make the blockbusters. Uh, the public would decide what was a hit, what wasn't a hit, and there were a lot of movies that people didn't know if they were going to be. A, you know, Ghostbusters was one; they didn't know if it was going to be. <laughs> That's a hit okay. Or not. They just reuse the IP and keep making shitty, you know, reboots and sequels now after the hits have been proven. Can Can you imagine if they had made this movie the way current year Hollywood would like it? Be like, well, we'll have Tom Cruise do a cameo in it, but really, it's just to pass the mantle. Onto some woman, but beyond to, that, we can't do anything military because it might make people feel bad. It might make people feel bad, so. Um, hmm. They're going to yell about it in the streets and protest because they have their rights that the military gave them and the soldiers in the she, past have fought and died for so they can go scream about she's it. She's an anti-war protester who's going to change his mind. Mm-hmm. Change his mind. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. And it's like, what? Well, she's the new Top Gun. She's the new Top Gun. That's right. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> if you have fighter pilot, black Jewish woman in a wheelchair. I was thinking and her pl- and her plane is her wheelchair. Oh, I forgot to tell you. So I had uh, I had someone uh, send me a Twitter DM, and I don't know if he wants me to name check him, so I'm not going to. But uh, and he said, "Hey, tell your wife there's a new Ginger Spider-Man character." Okay. And she's Ginger, so okay. she. But you can't just have. She is also wearing a rainbow dress and is in a wheelchair. Well, I have no problem with people in a wheelchair. I'm just saying it. But they well, don't have not. fighter pilots to be. You know? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, they got to make sure we oh, get Oh, I don't all care if the, she's in a wheelchair. The check marks. She probably has gluten allergies, but, too. But we, we know because she's ginger, she doesn't have alopecia. That's true. I said they really lack in representation. Yeah, I know, right? We need more hairless women in movies. Does she have epilepsy? We I don't, don't have that much representation with that either. That's true. You and you can say that. I can you have epilepsy. I anyway. did. I don't know. I used to. Anyway, how the hell did we get I here? Don't know. <laughs> That's how I usually end the videos. How did we end up there? How did we get here? No, I just think this is great uh, because this is going to be a game changer again. You know, with Jerry Bruckheimer involved, he might be able to get Johnny Depp back for Pirates. He's, he's, he's got a, trying to. He's got a lot more pull, and I think at the end of the day, I mean, the studios can want to make 
you know, social justice movies, but when more traditional movies, pure entertainment, pure Americana, when they're making bank, you're gonna make more of this, mm -hmm. you know. But, well, they don't. They aren't necessarily going to, but they really should. They really should, and and I think um, you know it's gonna make a case for. Oh, look! If we're respectful to the source material, and we we get people involved that were involved in the original, and, and we don't insult the audience, and we just give them uh, pure entertainment, and don't put you know don't shove agenda in it. I mean, there was diversity in it. There totally was. Yeah. But it wasn't like a point wasn't made about it. It just, you know, happened to be there. Yeah. Um, so I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, definitely. So, yeah, I, and I'm surprised. This is one of those times where if, if you asked me to bet on what this movie would have made, I would have said, yeah, it'll do okay. But who really gives a shit about Top Gun? Well, yeah, who, I did. My I know. I mean, it was a, did. people don't realize it was a huge cultural touchstone in the 80s, but it, it, it was something that you know I, I was expecting more of a I guess Ghostbusters afterlife kind of a box office you know like I knew right. Tom Cruise would do good because it's been like how many 30 years right, from right. the last one so you're like okay the, the, there, it'll do I, it right. honestly did far better than I, I ever I, I, I never could have imagined this I never could have imagined this so um so go, good on them good on them right good on them give us give us more of this Hollywood please we're gonna wrap this up yep uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye